<laughs> um, okay, so AEW and NXT ratings, both shows were uh, down pretty pretty big, but obviously AEW was was way up the week before from what it had been doing. Yeah, the AEW 18 to 49 number, which was 417,000, that's a real good number. Um, so it was not, I mean, it, it's a negative because the week before was 461. So it was down considerably. Um, and I, I think that a lot of that has to do with... Um, NBA and NHL. And I mean, I thought it was something that they they didn't beat both NBA games. Um, they beat the NBA game that started at like 9.15. Um, or they beat the NBA game that they, they lost to the NBA game that started at 9.15, but they beat the NBA game that was going on against most of the show. And they beat the NHL game that was pretty much head to head with the show. So, I mean, that's really good. I mean, it really is. I mean, when you're beating... Again, it's not raw numbers, and they're not going to be doing raw numbers anytime soon. Um, they may be, they, you know, 18 to 34. Yeah, they'll be doing close to raw numbers. Um, hopefully, you know, for their sake, it's it's like that now, and, and it will stay like that, and it will be competitive. And obviously, in women 18 to 34, for whatever reason, they're number one right now. But um, by a very slight margin, it can go either way. Next week, they could be number three. But the last two... Do they, do they, do they know... Who is driving the the increase in the female audience? Is it a, a couple really, of specific people? Is it women? Is it men? I can tell you, performers. I can, t- I can t- well, as far as like who performers wise, no, there's no way of knowing. They may know. I haven't heard, but you know, I I'm in contact with Harrington, and I think that if he figured it out, um, he might tell me. <laughs> Tony, <laughs> if Tony figured it out, he might tell me as well. But I haven't figured it out. What I have figured out is this. the It's not new homes watching. AEW, this is a really interesting thing with AEW is, is that the number of homes that watch AEW is, is not growing much at all. It's, but what's, gro- what's happening is, and it's, this is where the 18 to 34 women come in that's, that's been growing, is these are second persons in a household. So they would be like you watching AEW every week and all of a sudden you know all of a sudden your wife will come in although she's over 35 but um but let's say you're you're 10 years younger and you're 15 years younger and your wife is 31 or 28 or whatever and and maybe just watched it once and all of a sudden it's like hey i like this Mm -hmm. and sticks with it and it's happening more and more every week because the the average Household viewer, the average number of viewers per home for AEW is unbelievable. It is higher than um, every sport that I looked at last week, much higher other than soccer. But soccer is, you know, soccer has so many fewer viewers and it's such a multi-generational show. So soccer and and AEW were head to head. I mean, um, but AEW, like before, they would do like 1.35, 1.4, which was still beating everybody else in wrestling, but it wasn't beating everybody else. They're up to last week's show was 1.56 in the last three weeks of all set new records. And, um, you know, we're, we're not at attitude levels numbers. We're, we're still well behind that, but it's way ahead. So what, what essentially is happening is the homes that watch AEW are getting more and more affinity for AEW and people watching together, which is the opposite of WWE as it ages where it's a lot more older guys watching by themselves. Yeah. Which is interesting because WWE, uh, markets themselves as a family product and it's not anymore. Right. And, and it seems like, uh, the people don't, people, people don't know that. So there is that perception. I mean, it's funny because, you know, people will go, oh, I don't like WWE because all they do is market to kids. And it's like, um, whether they do or they don't, that's not who they're hitting. They're hitting fifty-year-old guys. I mean, right. that's that's what you're. That's what they're hitting. Um, whereas with AEW, it's it's um, you know, <laughs> it's it's uh, couples between eighteen and forty-nine. You know, it's not it's not big with kids. You know, it's it's not WWE still bigger with kids, even with even with teenagers, like with male teens. While the gap is absolutely closer, and like when I see with my my son's friends, you know don't even have any inclination of WWE. It's not even in their solar system. I mean, they never hear a word about it. And AEW, they absolutely do not watch on television every week, but they all DVR it and they all have a knowledge of it and they may watch a Kenny Omega match or a Young Bucks match or, 
you know, a wacky, you know, they all, they all thought stadium stampede was like the greatest thing on earth. Um, but they still won't watch AEW every week. It's just not, you know, that, that they're not going to do that, but there's an awareness. Um, there's an awareness that it's good, but you know, for the same reason that none of them watch the NBA, but there's an awareness of that too. It's like kids are not watching TV for two hours that often i mean some are but it's it's harder and harder whereas 18 to 34 they're still you know uh, but that's that's the gist of the difference in 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 what's happened with aew in the last you know since since the number has started to get over that 700 number and into the eights and and even the nine 901 number um you know is is it's again it's not really been an increase in males 18 to 34 either but it's been a big increase in women um, 18 to 49, but especially 18 to 34. So it's like, that's not, that's not kids. That's not teenagers. That's to me, that's, and, and again, not new homes either. So it's, it's like, you know, it's funny. Somebody actually put this on the board that AEW is the first pro wrestling show in decades that you can, you know, have your girlfriend watch and she's not going to go and look at you weird because they're not going to do something really stupid and make you feel like a fool for watching wrestling. Other than if you're Jim Cornette and you're, you know, you have a different idea of what wrestling is and this, and it, it will make you feel that way as compared to, you know, cause WWE, there's always, there's always going to be something because whatever, whatever, it's just how they are. Do you have any sense about next Saturday? Because AEW is obviously, uh, doing their show on Saturday instead of Wednesday. And it's almost like the the opposite of, of what NXT does for AEW in that, you know, TakeOver has historically been on uh, in this time slot uh, nor- normally. But because they are a, you know, they're a streaming service and you can immediately pick up whenever you want. I, I do wonder uh, if this Dynamite show does sort of the reverse and, and hurts a lot of those TakeOver viewers. Um, it might, I don't, I don't think it'll hurt appreciably because you can just watch an hour later anyway. Mm-hmm. What I think is going to happen with the Saturday show, my gut is, is it's going to be a lot more DVR viewers for AEW than live. Yeah. But, but the pot, because it's six o'clock, you know, if it's eight, even eight o'clock, it's a tough time on a Saturday night. Um, and there's always, you know, there's UFCs and all those other things, but I, what I do think will happen because they are coming in directly after an NBA game is that while their audience will probably be much lower than usual, they will also have a much higher than usual percentage of new viewers. So to me, the first hour on the Saturday show, and I, you know, if, 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 I, if I was in charge, I would have loaded that first hour up with the, the best in ring mm-hmm. that I possibly could or promo guys or whatever, because there are going to be a lot of people watching at certainly the first 15 minutes um, there's going to be a lot of new viewers that are basketball fans that are not going to turn their TV off. And I'm not saying they'll sit there for two hours, but they will sit there for a little while. It's, it's, it's like the, um, when, uh, TNA used to follow UFC and the big thing we learned was, is that you better start with like a real good physical match or else those people are going to tune off. But if you start with like a real good physical match, they will stay with it. And, you know, then you can make fans that way. It's a slow process, but, I, th- I consider the Saturday, like the number won't be that good, but I consider it a, a good opportunity to make new fans in the long run. Yeah, I think I was trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And I, you know, Saturday evening is, it's, well, it's is three, not it's three. It's three to five for us unless you're. Or, oh, right, right, right. Because we get the, the East Coast uh, version, right? I do. Yeah. So. So, um, yeah, but I think I'm going to watch Dynamite straight through and then I'll, I'll pick up takeover after mostly just because WWE network makes it so easy to, to just watch whenever you want. I think that's probably how I'm going to do it, but I wonder what everyone else's, uh, you know, pattern is going to be with both those shows. Cause you know, there's a lot of dynamite fans, but also takeover is historically just been, you know, really, really good shows. So, you know, oh, you I'm, have sure, that it'll be, I'm sure it'll be a great show. Yeah. It's my daughter's birthday that Saturday. Oh my so gosh. I don't know. I, I, Three to five, I think I'll be, I don't know. You know, I, I, I have no set plan. I think I'll be able to watch uh, Dynamite and I will eventually watch TakeOver. But um, UFC, uh, that one, because if the next day was, was um, free, I could just catch up the next day and be no mm-hmm. problem. But the next day, SummerSlam all day. <laughs> so it's just like that ain't happening. So um, I don't know that I'm even going to watch that UFC show. 
And I rarely miss a UFC show. I will watch TakeOver. I mean, I'll find the time to watch TakeOver no matter what. Is there anything in the ratings patterns that you wanted to mention that you didn't have in The Observer? Well, I didn't even have anything in The Observer this week. But the um, the two key things, I believe, were the Omega and Page against Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy match. And the big winner was that segment with FTR and the Young Bucks and Rock and Roll Express and Arn and Tully. By far, that blew away everything else on the night. That was a big, big success. Um, so... Yeah. So, you know, again, bring in, you know, nostalgia is going to work, um, but you can't rely on it. You know, I mean, it's like it's like the whole thing of like, wow, the Rock and Roll Express drew. I'm not surprised. You know, people kind of want to see that. But, um, you know, you can't like and, and they didn't. You know, they the show was built around Jericho and Orange Cassidy. Um, and so to me, it's just like it's just like, OK, it worked, but. It's not like we built the whole show around that. Because they, they spent the whole show doing nothing but Ricky Morton's going to be here and Ricky Morton's going to be in the main event and Ricky Morton's going to have a match at the end of the show with, with Chris Jericho, which is how WWE would do it, right? Exactly how they would do it. It's like, yeah, you probably would get um, a better final number, but you're not really accomplishing anything um, because Ricky Morton ain't going to be able to draw the second and third time and, and it's just not, you know, it's just not what it, it should be. And, um, you know, it's just, again, the same thing. It's what WWE did, but it, maybe it was a smarter way. They didn't put them in a match. They were not the focus of the show. They did draw. But, um, you know, they didn't, they, they, they didn't give you... Because they were on, they didn't give the whole show an aged feeling because they weren't the focus. They were being tribute. You know, they were there as legends. They were not there like Ric Flair or, or, or um, you know, Christian or anything like that to be... Um, big show, you know, you know, to, to be the new stars and take the way, take away from the, the Garzas, you know, and people like that, that are, you know, look, are, are now minor characters because these are the real stars being brought back.